Hello, George Nodrick here. In this video, I'm going to discuss one of the ways to sum this particular infinite series. It's the sum of the inf reciprocal squares of the integers. This was an open problem for hundreds of years. No one could sum this series. It turns out that the sum is transcendental. It involves pi. And the first person that was able to sum this was Euler, who was probably the greatest mathematician who ever lived. And I'm going to discuss how it is that he summed this particular series. But before we do that, we need to know uh, something about the theory of equations that he used. Unfortunately, uh, this is a subject that's no longer taught in schools. Uh, there's a great little book on it by Dickinson, a thin little book. And in the theory of equations, uh, before modern uh, c computers became available for finding the roots of polynomials, people devised many different methods in which to identify um, the possible roots using the coefficients of the uh, polynomial equation and sign changes going from term to term that is called the Descartes rule of signs uh, and there are many other methods. Uh, one of the methods that um, Euler uses, one of the facts, is that say if I have a polynomial, let's take a fifth order polynomial 2x to the fifth plus 5x to the fourth minus 25x cubed plus 5x squared plus 23x minus 10 is equal to 0. That po polynomial equation. <clears throat> the roots of this equation are x is plus minus 1, 2, negative 5, and positive one-half. Five roots to the equation. We have a fifth order equation and there's five um, uh, an nth degree polynomial has five roots. So, or nth degree polynomial has n roots. This is fifth order, so we have five roots. Now, if you divide through by the coefficient of the constant term so that the constant term has a coefficient of 1, then it turns out that the coefficient for the linear term is the negative of the sum of the reciprocals of the roots. Um, and I'll show that how, how that comes about. So we divide through by minus 10, which is the coefficient term. So this uh, becomes minus x to the fifth over 5, minus x to the fourth over 2, plus 5 halves x to the third, minus x squared over 2, minus 23 tenths x plus 1 is equal to 0. So by dividing through by the constant term, the constant term now has a coefficient of positive 1. That's the important fact. So if the coefficient of the constant term is plus 1, then the coefficient of the linear term is the negative sum of the reciprocal roots. where the x, k are the roots. So, let's see how that works. So let's sum up the roots. The reciprocal of positive 1 is 1. The reciprocal of negative 1 is 1. Reciprocal of 2 is a half. Reciprocal of minus 5 is minus 1 fifth. And the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. All right, the 1 minus 1 cancel, so we end up with 2 plus a half 
This is 5 halves minus 1 fifth. So putting over a common denominator of 10, this is 25 minus 2 or 23 tenths. That's the negative of the constant of the linear term. So the constant of the linear term when the coefficient constant uh, term has is uh, 1, positive 1, it's the this is equal to the negative of the reciprocal of the roots. The sum of the reciprocal of the roots. Okay, now we're going to use that, or Euler actually used that fact in summing this series. And I'll show you how he did that. It's really quite clever. Now let's look at some of the terms of this particular series. It's 1 plus 1 over 2 squared, plus 1 over 3 squared, plus 1 over 4 squared, plus 1 over 5 squared, and so on. It is the reciprocal of the squares of the integers, uh, the sum, that, that particular sum. Now what Euler did was really quite clever. He first started off looking at the infinite series, the Maclaurin series, for sine of x. Sine is an odd function, so it's only going to contain odd powers in its power series representation. And the series alternates. So the series looks like this. Okay, Contains only odd powers. Uh, x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial and so on. Now we have an x in each term so let's factor out the x. So we have 1 minus x squared over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over uh, 5 factorial minus x to the sixth over 7 factorial plus x to the eighth over nine factorial, and so on. Okay, once we factor out the x, what's left in the parentheses is an even function. Now, if you remember, sine has zeros on a regular basis, which are integral multiples of pi. Sine has roots. Remember, the roots are where the function passes or becomes equal to zero, or where the graph of the function passes through zero. And the roots occur at zero, plus minus pi, plus minus two pi, plus minus three pi, and so on. The roots on sine occur at integer multiples of pi. Okay, every half cycle it passes through zero, which are integral multiples of pi. Now, Euler reasoned that if we look at the power series for sine of x, the root at zero must be occurring because of this x here. And all the other roots must be due to what's left inside the parentheses there. That function inside the parentheses must be giving rise to those particular roots. Now, what he did next was he said, all right, Let's get rid of the x squares. These are even functions, so we can make a variable substitution. Let's let y equal x squared. And we're going to call this, this is a function on x. We're going to convert it to, say, g of y, which will be, when we make this substitution, it becomes 1 minus y over 3 factorial 
plus y squared over 5 factorial minus y to the third over 7 factorial plus y to the fourth over 9 factorial and so on. Okay. Now, the roots for y of x are multi integral multiples of pi. Okay, that's for the x. So the roots on g of y must be the squares. Okay, x squared. So the roots on g of y are our y k's that are now pi squared, 2 pi squared, 3 pi squared, 4 pi squared, and so on. So this particular equation then has those roots. Now here is the clever part is Euler said let's treat this equation as an infinite order polynomial, a polynomial of infinite order. Then that being the case the sum of the reciprocal roots of this equation must be equal to minus the coefficient of the linear term. Okay, here's our linear term in y. So then, the sum of the reciprocal roots of g of y of this equation then would be 1 over pi squared plus 1 over 2 pi squared plus 1 over 3 pi squared plus 1 over 4 pi squared and so on. We can factor out a 1 over pi squared so this becomes 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared and so on. And what is this? This is the series that we're trying to sum. So this must be equal to the negative of the coefficient of the linear term, which is a minus of minus 3 factorial, or 1 over 3 factorial. Or 3 factorial is 6. Three fa three, 1 over 3 factorial is 1 over 6. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So look at what we have here now. <clears throat> we have 1 plus 1 half squared, or 1 over 2 squared, plus 1 over 3 squared, plus 1 over 4 squared, and so on, is equal to, let's multiply through by pi squared, it's pi squared over 6. So, we have just summed the series with this clever technique. This is the sum of the series. This is pi squared over 6. So that's how Euler summed the series that nobody was able to do for hundreds of years prior to him. Pretty clever.